Lead us, Lord, into the desert. Lead us through the wilderness. Through this journey we will follow, for we long to see your face. In this time of sacred struggle, in this time of sacrifice, we rejoice, for we remember that you lead us into life. Gracious God, mercy is your name, redeeming us. You give your life away. Gracious God, your holy name, receiving love, we give our lives away. Teach us, Lord, who is our neighbor, is it friend or enemy, when we welcome or condemn it is you who oh, let us see. Gracious God, mercy is your name. Redeeming love, you give your life away. Gracious God, we bless your holy name. Receive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Welcome, sisters and brothers, to the first Sunday of Lent. In this Eucharistic celebration, let us pray that through our Lenten observances, we may grow in holiness, that we may be purified. And at the same time, let us pray for our elect, our catechumens, they went through the rite of election this morning. So let us continue praying for them, that they may have a fruitful journey towards their baptism. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist, let us acknowledge that we have sinned. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God spoke to Noah and his sons. See, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. 
also with every living creature to be found with you, birds, cattle, and every wild beast with you, everything that came out of the ark, everything that lives on the earth. I establish my covenant with you. No thing of flesh shall be swept away again by the waters of the flood. There shall be no flood to destroy the earth again. God said, Here is the sign of the covenant I make between myself and you and every living creature with you for all generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I gather the clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant between myself and you and every living creature of every kind. And so the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all things of flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. the first letter of St. Peter. Christ himself, innocent though he was, died once for sins, died for the guilty to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life. And in the spirit, he went to preach to the spirits in prison. Now it was long ago 
when Noah was still building that ark, we saved only a small group of eight people by water. And when God was still waiting patiently, that these spirits refused to believe. That water is a type of the baptism which saves you now and which is not the washing off of physical dirt, but a pledge made to God from a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has entered heaven and is at God's right hand, now that he has made the angels of the dominations and powers his subjects. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he remained there for 40 days, and was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he, he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good evening, sisters and brothers. Last week, I had a gathering with friends, and two of my friends, they have primary one kids. So their child, both are in primary one. So they share with one another that the primary one kid, both girls, they are struggling in the first few weeks at school. Because they are sharing, somehow my girl feel that very lonely in the school. They have no friends, although actually they have friends. Taking the school bus to the school is very scary for them. So that's their experience. They are, they are talking to each other. How come? Because actually at home, they are very talkative, very cheerful. But how come when entering into the primary school, somehow they are very scared? And I think it is a common experience for all of us who when we are entering a new place, when we are beginning a new journey, we are scared. But maybe I'm saying that because I was like that, the two kids when I was in primary. Because my mom told me that when I was in primary one, it took me a few weeks before I can go to school without crying. So I was that clingy, according to her. And then, yeah, and then I realized myself, I am one of the people, whenever I enter into a new journey, go to, into a new place, I always struggle. When I came to Singapore, I think some of you heard this story uh, uh, before. The first two weeks, I was regretting why did I come to Singapore? Why did I come to Singapore? I didn't understand the language. I didn't like the food. I didn't understand what the people are talking about. I didn't understand everything. And I felt very, very low and very, very lonely. It was only when I opened myself, 
when I believe that I need to stretch my heart, when I have to be open, then I learn to love, to live here. Now I'm a Singapore citizen and then I'm here, I think, for many, many more years to come. I think all of us, whenever we are entering into a new stage of life, when we are entering a new journey, we are always stretched. When someone gets married, you may experience that now I, don't, I cannot make decision on my own. I need to discuss. Everything is not about me. We need to talk about that. When I have friends who just have children, when they have the first child, I saw with my own eyes how they struggle. Even one of them shared with me that sometimes our struggle is that we forget how to become husband and wife because all the attention is on the child. It is a new thing in their life. And it doesn't stop there. When the child grows into the primary school, and then the way we love our children will change. When they go into teenagers, the way we communicate with them must change also. Even as a single person, I experience all the changes happening in my life from the 20s to 30s, now I'm in my 40s. Everything changed and every time we will have that struggle. And this struggle signify that we are always invited to grow, to grow to become more like God, to grow in holiness. We are always stretched in our life. And I think our readings today invites us to accept that truth, that we are always invited to grow, to be purified, to be more and more like God. Our first reading, in the first reading we hear that it was the water that cleansed through the flood. After 40 days of flood, then God says to Noah that I will give you protection. This is my covenant that never again that flood will happen, that wash out the human life. Through the flood, it is in the New Testament, we hear how St. Peter said to us, the flood with Noah, it is the type of our baptism. In Jesus, the meaning of water has become a new meaning. It becomes an instrument to signify our new life after baptism. Jesus himself didn't have to be baptized, but he wanted to be baptized to be one with us. In that way, when we are baptized in Jesus' name, we are invited, we are saying yes, we are responding, yes, Lord, I want to journey with you. When Jesus was baptized, it's like Jesus giving his hand, come, be with me, journey with me. And we are, when we are baptized, we are saying, yes, I would like to journey with you. The gospel today, the passage that we hear today, is the passage immediately after Jesus was baptized. In the Old Testament, we hear that the Israelites, they went through the Red Sea, and after they went through the Red Sea, they went through 40 years in the desert. They went through 40 years of purification. And in Jesus, uh, the story of Jesus that we hear today, after baptism, he was in the desert for 40 days. Jesus didn't have to be purified. Jesus is pure. But he went through all this to show us this is how we should live with him. And he wants us to be one with him. What does it mean for our Lenten observances to grow in holiness? What does it mean to join Jesus in this journey of life? Jesus stated clearly in the gospel today. He said, the time has come. It is the time for us that we have to grow in holiness. We stretch our hearts to be like him. And what does it mean to join him in this journey of life? He said, first, the kingdom of God is close at hand. Second, repent. Third, believe in the good news. The first one, the kingdom of God is close at hand. In this Lenten journey, we are invited to ask ourselves, sisters and brothers, do we believe in the kingdom? Yes, we say Jesus is king, Jesus is my Lord. Do we really mean that? Who is our king in our life? Who takes priority in our life? Is it really Jesus? 
This is what we are journeying towards. To have Jesus really as the king in, my, in our hearts. To have him as the one that we prioritize every day. So that it is not about our job. It is not about our family. It is not about my relationship. It must be Jesus first. And because of Jesus, then I will work my best in my, in my workplace. I will love my family the best way I could. Because of Jesus first. Because he is the king. Do we believe that? If we believe that Jesus is the king, then he asks us to repent. Repent in Greek is uh, the word in Greek, metanoia, meaning turning back. Where are we turning from? We are turning back from what is bad to what is good, to what is not about God towards God, towards what is killing, towards what is giving life. We are invited to ask ourselves, have we been living our life as someone who is alive? Or have we been killing ourselves? Our choices in life, the things that we do, the words that we speak, does it give us the dignity of us as being God's beloved? Or are we killing ourselves every day with the choices, with the wrong choices that we make? Because if we believe in God, we would repent. We will always go back to the original, to the origin why God created us. God created us because of love and we are meant to love. Do we love ourselves first of all? And if we believe in the kingdom, we repent, then Jesus said, believe in the good news. What does it mean? In the coming weeks, we will hear how Jesus heal. Jesus will perform miracles. Jesus will uplift dignity of the people. Do we believe that? If we believe, imagine last time during COVID times, when we hear, okay, this supplement, this medicine can cure COVID. If we believe that, we will try our best to get that medicine, to get that supplement. We will consume that. We, want, we would like to have that as part of our life. If we believe in the good news, if we believe in Christ, shall we join Jesus? Shall we trust Jesus and join in his work? Then we ask ourselves, sisters and brothers, when people meet us, do they feel joy? Do they see hope? When we encounter the people, what do the people see in us? Do they feel judged? This is all our Lenten journey is about. We journey towards Christ. And in that journey, we will be tempted. We will be challenged. Every time we say that this is my journey, I want to be a better person, I want to be holy, we will face challenges. And Jesus showed us, he is journeying with us through the 40 days in the desert. And he would like us to be like him, to be holy, just like him. So sisters and brothers, the kingdom is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. May God's peace be with all of us. As one family of God, let us now rise and we profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us make this season of land a time of repentance and renewal as we turn to God our Father with our prayers. Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For the church that we proclaim in word and deed God's lasting covenant of love and truth. To the world. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For the nations of the world, that they dismantle and destroy structures of injustice and inequality, and live in fidelity to the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For those facing the storms of life, that they have the courage to resist temptations as well as have the humbleness to repent when temptation entices them in. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your your mercy, mercy, hear us. For the 500 elect from 14 parishes in the West and City districts, whose names were enrolled in the book of the elect this morning, that they together with their communities will continue to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit throughout this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your your mercy, mercy, hear us. For our community of St. Mary of the Angels, that we enter the desert of Lent and emerge with accepting joyfully the invitation to conform our manner of living to God's ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your your mercy, mercy, hear us. Let us pause for a moment and we pray for our personal intention and we pray for our family that we may grow in holiness as one family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. God, our Father, quiet our minds and hearts so that they may hear your call and bravely go forth to be signs of your love to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clair, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and save from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that they should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Come, beloved, and rest your mind. Leave the things of this world behind. Here I will be your daily bread All that you need Into the desert I will lead Here in the silence My word will speak And you will find the peace you seek Here in the desert
desert Stay beloved and lose your fear There is healing and mercy To the desert I will lead Here in the silence my word will speak And you will find the peace you seek Here in the desert From this desert your life will bloom out of despair is hope renewed And from this death you shall arise Arise with me, arise with me. Into the desert I will lead Here in the silence my word will speak And you will find the peace you here in the desert Into the desert I will lead Here in the silence My world will speak And you will find the peace you seek Here in the desert